Today, I'll be showing you how to install the new compiler tools for C and C++. This tool chain comes with most of the tools that you need in order to get started to compile projects in C and C++ on Windows. To get started, we want to go to the msys2 website. I'll post a link in the description below where it says msys2 is a collection of tools and libraries providing you with easy to use environment for building, installing and running native Windows software. It includes up-to-date native builds for GCC, MingW, CPython, CMake, Mason, OpenSSL, FFmpeg, Rust, Ruby, and many more. To download and install, it's pretty easy. To download, just click the download the installer button here and that will launch a download for the executable application. Hit save somewhere on your computer and let's go find that download. All right, the download here has finished downloading into my downloads folder where I'm going to launch it from by double clicking. And next I'm welcome to the msys2 setup. First off, I'll hit next to start the installation. It's asking us where we want to actually install our tools. So make sure you put it somewhere that you'll remember on your system. C msys64 is fine by me. I'm gonna hit next. Following that, it's asking for what you wanna call the shortcut so you can get it from your program shortcut. It says enter a name to create a new directory. I'm just gonna stay with the default. You can call it whatever you want that makes sense to you. Hit next and let it install and unpack its components. It'll take a little while. If you wanna see the details, you can hit show details so you can follow along with what it's doing. Currently it's extracting and now installing the system tools. All right, once the installation's finished, it'll say all components installed and we're ready to hit next. And then you'll get a checkbox to run msys2 right away. I'm going to allow that to be selected and hit finish. What then will happen is you'll get a launched terminal. This is msys2. So in here, you can use it like you would use a Linux environment. So for example, if I wanted to list something, I do ls. If I wanted to clear things out, I do clear. Let me make things bigger so we can see a little better. Basically, this is a bash shell. Look at that. If I type in vi, it says bash command not found. So what's nice about this is it actually gives us a package manager to use in this shell, which is fantastic. For those of you who've used Arch Linux in the past, you'll rejoice because you can now use Pac-Man to install some of your favorite system build tools, including the base development package, which will help you get tools directly onto this Windows computer. Anyways, I'm gonna do pacman s First thing I'm gonna get is vim, so I can actually read in files. And it says, do I wanna proceed with this installation? Well, yes, enter. It's gonna retrieve some packages. That way I can write a simple program. Now I can open and create files on here. If you need to see where you're currently located, just type in pwd, or in, I'm in home savvy currently. And now let's actually install some build tools. For most build tools here with pacman, we can do pacman s and do the base dash D E V E L package. This will install quite a few utilities for us, including things like make and auto make GDB and a few others here. Notice all the packages that we get. Fantastic. So can we use GCC? Nope. G plus plus. Nope. So the next one we want is going to be Pacman space dash S and we want the GCC and probably C make packages. Let's enter those both in and press enter to get things going. This is the fantastic thing about using msys2. It makes it really easy to get packages with a Linux package manager that you would be using in Linux directly on your Windows computer. And I'll actually show you how to integrate this whole thing inside of Windows so you can use it from the Windows terminal, PowerShell, or command prompt. But now let's check if we finally have G++ for our C++ programs. This is great. It says no input files. What about GCC for our C files? For our C compilation, absolutely here, great. If you ever want to check the version, you can do G++, I think it's dash version, and there we go. 11.3 is the current version of that. Uh, you can check GCC, I believe the same way, two dashes with the version, and that one's also at 11.3. Of course, they got installed together, so that's what you would expect. You can also install the likes of Python if you want, whatever your heart desires at this point. So interestingly enough, you might be asking, how do I reach folders on my Windows computer if I'm using this, this bash shell environment. Well, you can actually do CD for change directory, do slash. That's going to take you to the root directory 
and you can see here we have a few things available to us. And if you want to change directories, you can do CD. For example, maybe I want to access the C drive. Well, I can do C slash, and then from there, if I tab, I have access to, to my C root directory. Fantastic. Now I can access things like my user home directory and even things like downloads where I just got done downloading a file. Why do I say this? Well, you can compile the things directly in here. For example, let me create a new text document and a C++ program so we can give this a shot. So in order to make my first hello world program, I'm going to include the IO stream library and do int main for my main function, call out the standard library and print out hello world. I'm also going to put an end line here and then finally return zero at the end. And that should be enough to get things going here. I'm going to save this as main.cpp. After I'm done saving that, I have this main.cpp file in my downloads folder. So how do I compile that? Well, I can use the fact that I can navigate my Windows directories and just do G++ and specify the location of that main CPP file. And then I'm going to output it. I'll just output it directly here. So I'm just going to call it main and press enter. All right, things compiled. It didn't complain to us. And look at that. If I do ls, I see main.exe located in the current directory, which is my home savvy directory. Fantastic. Let me see if I can run this real quick. I'm going to do dot slash main dot exe. Look at that. Hello world was successfully spit out at me, meaning it successfully ran directly from my sys2. This bash shell here. Fantastic work. But now let's make this work in a terminal. So start up a terminal and then try G++. It's not going to work because the system can't find this tool yet, but we can help it find it. So what we will want to do first, search for environment or environment variables and make sure to find something that says edit the system environment variables in the control panel. Click on this and you should see this environmental variables button, which will then show you the environmental variables. Go down a path and hit edit and then let's add in a new location. By default in the C my sys 64 user bin directory is where we'll find the G++ tool. So we're going to copy and paste that location directly into a new location for the environmental variable. After that's done, we should be able to hit OK. Make sure you also hit OK on this one as well. So, so things apply and then hit OK on this one as well. Now you'll try G++ and it won't work again because you need to restart the terminal. I'm exiting out and then I'm starting a new one. OK. Now let's try G++. Look at that. This time it says fatal error, no input files. Well, I'm just going to transfer over to the downloads folder. And inside here, I'm going to list things out. And notice I still have that main CPP file. Well, this time I'm going to do G++ main.cpp. And I'm going to output it as main. Things compiled. They didn't complain. I'm going to list the contents now. Now I have main executable in my downloads. And I'm going to try running that main executable real quick. Dot slash main dot exe. And look at that, hello world. Now you have it working across the system as well in your native Windows terminal, PowerShell, and command prompt. Congratulations, you've now made a cohesive experience for yourself to develop C and C++ programs. If you'd like me to talk about how to set up Python with this same tool, let me know in the comments section below. I know a lot of you asked for this one using msys2. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.